Good evening. Welcome to Tuesday, June 15th, 2021 regular selectmen's meeting. We have a full board of selectmen and select women, as, uh, including our two newest members. We have the town manager, the town clerk, the chief of police is with us, and we have our finance director on Zoom. Uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I remind everybody that if you would please put your microphones on so the people at home can hear what you're saying, whether you want them to or not. I have to say, doing the Pledge of Allegiance today is much easier than having the delay come through over the Zoom <laughs> thing. I get confused halfway through saying it because I hear other people two words behind me. <laughs> so, um, as we have uh, May 25th meeting minutes, but is since Noah and I are the only two that were there, is. Do we still make a motion and second it, Patty? Or? No, I already got it with Ken, Noah, and you okay. over email because okay. we wouldn't ever have a corner right. again. So, right. so they're approved. That's easy enough. Yeah. Sign that and move it on. <clears throat> um, uh, we have no public comment. Uh, we have no public hearing. Um, we have no reports of any of the committees. <laughs> is uh, I know Vision Berwick is meeting tonight, actually, right now, I believe. Yeah. Um, is department reports, appointments, presentations, and other guests. It, I guess I'll, I'll take that opportunity to welcome our two new members. Thank is, you. Uh, congratulations Thank you. and condolences. <laughs> is, um, is <clears throat> we usually have a good time here. We're pretty informal. Is, is uh, We try not to get too technical with things, just getting town business done. So, um, unfinished business, town manager's report. Um, Bibber uh, Funeral Home is having a um, cut ribbon cutting next uh, Wednesday on their site up on Cemetery Road. Did you get your invitation? Tuesday. Isn't it the 22nd? 22nd. Tuesday. All right. I think so, because it's my birthday. Yeah, true. <laughs> Uh, so that will be nice. I uh, haven't been inside, so I'm looking forward to seeing what the inside looks like. It's a real nice place outside. Um, paving, as you all heard tonight, it, it looks like they've started up on um, Cranberry Meadow Road. There's one section between Worcester and Cemetery Road that we'll be tearing up and then replacing culverts and adding material to improve that road. Um, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at the Memorial Field, there will be a uh, public hearing on the uh, feasibility study that was done by Tom Irwin, Inc. Um, they've been spent spending a lot of time here do doing stuff, so um, we've seen some of the recommendations, but it'll be official. Uh, they're going to do it under the pavilion, so if anybody's interested from the public or from this group, uh, you can attend. They've done an e excellent job. Um, Coast Bus has sent out notices to me that uh, they're having a hard time finding people, mm -hmm. uh, so they're going to be changing some of their schedules and what they're offering for uh, full-time employment is, is pretty impressive. You know, Start, they, starting pay for a CDO bus driver is twenty-one twenty-five an hour, right? Yeah, think. I'll be here on that. Yeah. Yeah. So <coughs> hopefully they'll. Uh, I didn't see any schedule in this area that's changing. Um, I think the only change we might have in Berwick is on Saturday afternoons. They're going to run. Do every other run, I think is how it's going to be. So, is the daytime schedules will be the same. The weekday schedules, I believe, will be the same. And then, oh, like I said, Saturday afternoons, I believe they're cutting half the runs. As they do did report that they're up over 60 percent of their pre-pandemic ridership. So that's a good thing. And um, <clears throat> so, it, you know, things are up and coming at least. But yeah. Mm. Yep. Um, we had submitted um, your mark application through Senator Collins' office, and uh, if you watch the news, that has gone nowhere. Um, so they're trying to; she's trying to put together her own. Um, so we're all in a holding pattern. We 
we submitted three proposals, one for the water department, uh, uh, work we're doing there, um, which is, uh, I got a geophysical report from them and they're going to start, they picked a couple of sites where they're going to do some test wells to see what the water quality is and, and the volume. They need 300 gallons a minute. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what they find. What are, the, you, what are the sites, Steve? They're up on uh, Rochester Street and uh, 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 Hubbard Road. On Hubbard Road. Yeah. Oh, they're on Hubbard Road? Closer, once I saw are closer to the plant than I thought they'd be. Yeah. Uh, so um, we'll see what they get. When is that going to happen? Within the next month, uh, they'll start testing. Let us know. I will, for sure. Um, there's one that is belongs to uh, uh, Great Works Land, Land Trust, Trust that I'd like to see that. That's free and clear, hopefully, and uh, the others may be looking for purchases and stuff. But And we're in the process of finalizing all the paperwork for the bond uh, that we have been approved for, and uh, we're just getting all the legal stuff taken care of uh, this week. So uh, that's... <coughs> All I have at this time. Any other questions of Steve? If not, we'll move on. Um, Selectman's communications. Um, I don't know if, if uh, the, the rest of the board got it, but um, as Linda was on the school board, she is no longer there, so we have a, uh, an opening, a vacant opening on the school board. We've had one person submit a letter expressing interest. Um, is I'd encourage anybody else that may be interested to. Uh, Two. Contact. We have another one. Too. We, have, we have another one. Two. Two now. So two now. So they'll be at the June twenty second meeting. So is um. Yeah. And that will be to, to fill out the fill out the Linda's term. Yep. So that'll just be straight appointment from the board. Yeah. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Oh, no, the, the, the selectmen have the choice of leaving it vacant, but we typically don't unless it's very close to an election. So, um, no. other than that, I don't really have anything. Don't we have um, the water board appointments coming up too? When is that? Sewer board? Yep, yeah, sewer board. Happening the 22nd. It's reading statements of Ben and okay. the other person. Stephanie? No. No. Oh, yeah, I can't remember who it was. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I didn't think we got involved in the sewer board. Uh, we appoint the trustees. That's it? Yeah, we yeah. appoint the trustees. Can and yeah. Ben. Yeah. yeah. So. You appointed Lisa Houston for one year term. Oh, yeah, Ken Hall's the other one. Yeah. 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 Ken Hall. Yeah. And Ben Niles. Yeah. Plus, you have the MS4 annual report coming up, um, and Christy will come here to do that. That's the stormwater mm -hmm. uh, stuff that we're forced to do. So. She manages that for us. So that brings us to our accounts payable. All right. We have a payroll warrant, number 75, for June 3rd, 2021, for the amount of $69,260.60. We have an account payable warrant number 78 for June 8th, 2021 for the amount of $953,228.28. We have a payroll warrant number 79 for June 17th, 2021 for the amount of $75,009.17. We have an account payable warrant number 80 for well, June 15th, 2021, to the amount of $112,120.70. We have a payroll warrant number 77 for uh, June 6th, uh, June 11th, 2021, for the amount of $74,742.41. And a payroll warrant number 76 for June 10th, 2021, for the amount of $80,000. $369.02. I'll make a motion that we pay our bills. Second it. Excuse me, Tom. Was the AP 78 25 cents or 28 cents? 78. Let me find which one that one was. 76. 79. 75. 78. 25 cents. Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. Thank you. 
We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, I'll show raise a show of hands. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Five zero. Thank you. Then we come to new business. <coughs> Is um, Patty? Should we move the election of the chair and stuff up first? Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, make it official. Sure. Is, um, is, is, uh, we have an election of Board of Selectmen, Chair and Vice Chair. Is uh, open it up for nominations. I nominate Tom Wright to be chair. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll nominate um, well, you. We, have, we need a second for that. I'll one second first. that. Right. Already went over this. Any, any other nominations for chair? <laughs> I'm supposed to say it three times, but I'm not going to bother. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have a motion and a second for Tom Wright to be chair. Is all those in favor? Five zero. And now we have an election of vice chair. The nominations for vice chair. I'll nominate Noah. I'll second it. I'll accept it. Any any other nominations? If not, as I'll put it to a vote, all those in favor? Okay. 5 0. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and my first thing to do is the next week I get to run on meeting. Yeah. It won't be on. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now we'll go to the, the ratio declaration and reimbursement application. We do this every year, the state. Uh, looks at, they come in and do their audit every year. Um, of our assessing records and uh, make sure we haven't made any mistakes and usually we're in pretty good shape. Um, it's, uh, you have to report the total number of homestead exemptions um, and I guess this year the total number we have is 1,441 which is a nice big number and if people haven't gotten their homestead exemption paperwork in I advise you to get it in, you save some money. So the state revenue services says we should set it at 94%. Our assessors are saying, no, we'll set it at 100%. Um, it's based on value and um, we just had a reval, so I'm not sure why they're saying it's 94%, but uh, our recommendation, his, their recommendation is to declare it at 100%. Any questions for the town manager? Is this this why uh, Lisa is here for this part of it? Uh, no, she's no? for the executive yep. session. Okay. Is, um, <clears throat> it's, you know, they, you, they explain this every year, and we go through the same discussion every year. Is um, um, you know, we're we're allowed to go up to like 110 percent or something like that, aren't yeah. we? Uh, but well, 103 this year. 103 this year. Okay. Yeah. And as low as 85 percent. Yeah. So. And, um, so typically we've been doing it at our 100% ratio yeah. because that's what our accountants you know, tell us that we should be doing. Is this what it's been the last couple of years? Yeah, it's, it's been about 100%. I think one might have been at a little over 100% uh, one year, but the reval kind of brings that all back in line. So and our reval was done, what, two or three years ago. Yeah. So yeah. we're in good shape. So why does the, the state get involved in it? Because <laughs> it's based on uh, the, all their school numbers and what they uh, allocate for each town for schools. It's based on their evaluation. Okay. Right. So and what we declare. So. Will they go with what we're saying? Huh? No. Their theirs is usually. Uh, so they're going to go with ninety four. Uh, no, the the ratio will stay the same, but they use different numbers for valuation. I don't know why, but it's. Yeah. I just do. Yeah, no, it, nothing's going to change for us, no, whether we no. go to 94% or 100%. 100%. It doesn't matter, you no, know, because the state already figures that all in for, for their end anyways. Yep. So, um, if there are no further questions, I would uh, accept the motion to set the uh, ratio declaration and reimbursement at 100%. I move. Motion, do I have a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? All right, five zero, Patty. Now they only left two spaces for us to sign this for some reason, so we'll have to. Write small. Write small. <laughs> well, if Ken was here, he writes small enough for all of us. Oh, cool. yes. so just down. 
here somewhere. All right. And we have our June 8th election. Is, uh, let me pull that up. 13. So June 8th election, we had a total of 471 votes cast, which uh, is you know pretty pretty low, but for an off off year, it's actually not bad compared to what we've had in the past. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Not great, but better. Right. Yeah, we've had better had in January. Yeah, we've had as low as 200 in June sometimes. So is um, and as everybody knows, we have two new selectmen because of that. As Travis Doyron was re reelected to the school board. Um, all the warrant articles passed except for number 38 is um, that was the only one that didn't pass is all the other questions all passed also. Um, is, uh, any questions, comments, or anything? I, I How many registered voters do we have in Broward? Seven hundred and seventeen after the November presidential election. I haven't updated it since then, but um, we had six or seven new registrations at this election. Okay. So pretty poor overall, yes. but not uncommon for you know, no small even town the elections. Presidential was four thousand and ten or something, so we don't ever reach that. Right. 6,700 Isn't there only one town in like Vermont that always gets 100% of the voters? Or yeah. the one in New Hampshire where they have like 11 registered. I was going to say 14 registered voters or whatever it is. Yeah. They vote at midnight. Right. <laughs> so, but I want to thank everybody that worked the election. Patty's crew, as usual, did an excellent job. As I heard, she was had a very busy night the night before. Yes. <laughs> is, is, uh, so she did very well that day. Is, uh, and uh, I want to thank everybody else for coming out and voting. <laughs> that brings us to the sale of the old fire station. As you know, is, uh, we you know, got the okay to put that up for sale. Is, um, we had it appraised last year of around 600000 Yeah, just over 600000 pretty much in line with what we have assessed at. <clears throat> so it didn't surprise me. It was very thorough. It was quite an extensive report. So you, you don't have anything in policy that tells you how to do that. You could put it out to bid and just and see what you get. You have had some interest in it uh, from different people. Um, those who uh, had expressed interest, I did send them an email telling them that it was approved. So if they're interested, pay attention because uh, we'll be put, doing something with it. You could, I could approach just the people who have asked uh, about it, or we could hand it over to a uh, realtor to to do it for us. So that's what we should do. Yeah, you should put it out there so that everybody has the opportunity. Someone belly ache. Yeah, about yeah. it. So it's got to go out. Yeah, we don't have time to be showing it, and, and oh. I don't know anything about real estate except that it's expensive. So <laughs> that's their job, the realtor's job. Let them show it. But yeah, I think that if you don't put it out there. And someone says, oh, I didn't get the information. I didn't know. Yeah, okay. So is, you know, some of the other questions that I have about the sale is I've asked, talked to Steve about that, about what kind of restrictions that we can put on the sale of it. What the committee have to say. Is whether they, whether, you know, we can uh, say no residential, you know, things like that. Is, so is, if you could answer that question for us, is can we do something like that? That's a planning question. I, I don't know if you can do that or not. I don't think you can restrict it. I think you can because I don't know. To that, be honest my with you, my house know. was previously owned by the Mormon Church, and when I bought it from them, there was a restriction in the in the sale agreement that said a uh, strange restriction, but it said I couldn't. You could not use the house to sell liquor for a year after I bought the property. No. <laughs> that was a restriction that was in the actual buyer's agreement that I just couldn't turn the house into a bar was well, essentially what they were saying. I had no intention of doing that. Like but, I say, but it, was, but, it was, but it was in the buyer's agreement and 
both real estate, you know, people that I was working with, both they were like, that's just that's just what it is. That's just you know. I'll probably. do some research and find out if if yeah. that's what you would like to do. We can well, just write it, it up that way. You know, yeah. I, I I think that we need to concentrate on you no know, the commercial side of things, the retail side of things. Yeah, I'll you know, I'll second that. You know, is gonna have enough going on. <laughs> yeah, is, the edge. And you know, for one thing, for one thing is the access and parking and everything is terrible good. for anything like that. Agreed. You know, we I know that we've had is um, people from Corner Point interested. We've had a flooring guy in Berwick who has a flooring company approach us. Um, I was talked to by an electrical contractor who's interested. So there's a lot of interest out there for commercial properties. Great Falls expressed interest in it early on, so I let him know. Uh, because he likes to buy up all the property around him to control what <laughs> goes in. You know, like he any, make sure his value stays up. I'm right, sure. Right, like any developer. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I think the general consensus is that you know we find a real estate agent to okay. do it. Is um, as I would suggest somebody that specializes in commercial yep. real estate is. Um, No, and the idea is that when we sell the station, the proceeds are going to go back into paying down the debt on the new stations in the public yep. safety right. complex. So, <laughs> yeah, it should be about one year's worth of uh, one payment <laughs> for debt service. <laughs> um, any? I'm always the interest. Yeah. Yep. Any other? Questions or comments on that subject? No. Um, is uh, we have no other business. Second public comment. We do have an executive session to discuss personnel. Um, before we get to that, is there any other business and non-agenda items anybody would like to bring up? Um, is we're going to be discussing personnel is. I don't believe we will be making a decision no, you don't in the meeting. Make, you don't need to make a decision. Just, Tonight. Is, um, so we will not be coming back into session. So I will make a motion that we go into executive session under Title I, subsection 405-6A for the discussion of personnel. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. Aye. All right. Give us a few minutes to get things taken care of and... Uh, Make sure we're off the air.